And now it's time for some Q&A from you, the viewers. And our first question comes in from Stacy Luster about our favorite little mini PCs here on the channel. Another viewer also commented about how much I love these things. And uh, I love them because you all love them. Whenever I put up a mini PC review, it doesn't matter what it is. Everybody loves watching them. I get so much of a uh, broader initial viewership on these reviews than I do on many other things that I review here on the channel. So that certainly drives this a bit. And I got some unsolicited feedback from some folks about what they use their mini PCs for. And I'm going to ask you for some of your stories a little later in the wrap up here too. Uh, so Alan Bueller here talks about how he was using an Intel compute stick for his church for digital signage until it fried itself. He was looking for something with a little bit better cooling. This one might uh, provide that for him. So he might give that a shot. So there you go. That's one usage uh, case there. Uh, Tommy Van Pelt here wrote in about using tiny PCs in his kids' room. Uh, they're great for running Netflix kids or YouTube kids. You can add uh, either of those to the Windows startup and the kids can use them without fail and they don't have to add another uh, receiver for just their rooms. So there's another uh, use case there. You could, of course, use a, you know, a set-top box or something that might cost a little less, but if you can spend maybe 50 bucks more and get a fully functional computer that the kids could do their homework on too, that's, I think, a pretty good deal. Uh, what drove me into mini PCs was back when I uh, was first getting into them here on the channel, I was really surprised by how functional they became. I think one of the first mini PCs I reviewed here on the channel was a, a Bricks fanless computer that I was just completely fascinated with because uh, at the time I was working in my family business, kind of running the IT department. We serviced about probably about 30 or 40 PCs at just one of our locations. We had a bunch of other locations also. And um, I was just really amazed that I could get something that had very few moving parts, was all solid state, no fan, that could do a lot of what our people needed to do throughout the day and would presumably be a little bit more reliable and can be replaced for considerably less than some of the little workstations that we were buying. So uh, one of those fanless bricks PCs ended up running the telephone switchboard uh, at our new location that is still operating three and a half years later without a single hiccup. It's just perfect for that. And you know it's snappy enough that you can get your word processing and some of the other stuff we were doing on the device as well as running the phone system and uh, hasn't been a problem at all. And these are really handy for that because anything you can do to make your uh, IT costs less and more reliable and uh, tucked away somewhere where people aren't gonna kick it on the floor by accident, you can just mount them to the back of the monitor and you're good to go. And that's one of the things that really attracted me to mini PCs. But one of the problems with these little mini PCs is that the ones that come bundled with Windows have practically zero storage available on them. Uh, one of the issues we've been seeing now with this one and many others is that you only get 32 gigabytes of storage. And with Windows 10, with all the updates and everything, it's almost useless when you first get it because it just doesn't have enough space to update itself initially. You gotta plug in additional storage to get uh, it's set up and operating. It's been a real hassle lately. Uh, and the reason is Windows licensing once again. And I found this chart, which came from some Microsoft sales presentation on a website called CNXSoft. You can go to this link here to see the full article about how these mini PCs are licensed and sold. It was really an interesting article and worth checking out. And so for something like an entry-level desktop, like many of the larger mini PCs we've looked at, or some of these little stick PCs like uh, this one is here, you'll note that the storage has to be less than or equal to 32 gigabytes to get the free or low-cost license of Windows. If it comes bundled with more storage than that, they're no longer eligible and they miss the $200 price point that I think a lot of these folks are trying to hit with these things. And I would love to see some options maybe that come with Ubuntu pre-installed or something, because it runs great on here, that have more storage or maybe upgradable storage or something to make them uh, more usable. But this is why they are crippling their own computers is because Microsoft won't give them a break on the license if they have any more than 32 gigabytes of storage on board. And that I think is holding up this whole mini PC market to some degree artificially, because I think consumers should buy what they want. And I think a lot more people would be buying these little $200 PCs if they were more functional for that price tag. And I don't think they're very profitable though at that price. It's kind of a little conundrum they have uh, found themselves in technologically here. They've got these really functional devices that would probably eat away their more expensive, more profitable devices because they, oops, there it goes. Uh, they do run just fine and they tend to um, not break when you drop them like that. So uh, that is that. But there is a version of Windows apparently in the works called Windows 10 Lean. 
uh, which I talked about on our Facebook group. And I incorrectly noted in my original video that the entire Windows installation would take up two gigabytes, uh, when in fact it's going to be two gigabytes less than it currently takes up, which should give enough space to at least get some updates installed on these things when uh, they uh, get to you there. So check out this article at Lily Puting. It talks a little bit about what Windows 10 Lean is all about. And when it is available, maybe we'll install it on one of these 32 gig machines and see if it's any more usable. And we'll also see what is given up in the process because there's got to be a bunch of stuff in that two gigabytes they're taking out of that Lean version of Windows. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast. Chris Allegretta and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.